going to be talking about some of these questions that we often get is what is palliative care? How's palliative care different from other parts of medicine or other medical specialties? Uh, when and how can someone benefit from palliative care? A really common question. Uh, we'll talk more about, well, how does palliative care help people live their best life? What do we actually do when we're seeing an individual? And we'll also spend some time talking about the difference between palliative care and hospice care, which we know are two concepts that often can be confusing and are somewhat related. So we'll try to clear that up as well. So let's jump in with this first question. What is palliative care? And I'd actually love for you all, uh, whether you feel comfortable putting in the chat or even unmuting, uh, to hear you know, what comes to mind when you hear the term palliative care. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, so if you're willing, uh, feel free to put your thoughts in the chat or you can unmute yourself. And maybe while you're gathering your thoughts, I'll just share that you know, nowadays, a lot of times we'll go ask Google what something is. And I'll show you that if you Google palliative care and Google image search, these are some of the results you get. And uh, one of the things you'll see a lot of imagery around is hands being held. Often it's a young person holding an older person's hand. And while what I would say is that palliative care, we certainly want to both physically and metaphorically hold the hands of our patients. I hope by the end of the session today that um, you'll come to recognize that there are a lot of other things that palliative care can offer too. Uh, we certainly also want palliative care to be uh, inclusive and provide care to the full diversity of patients uh, here in the Bay Area. And unfortunately, a lot of the images here don't reflect the diversity of the population in our area. And we really want palliative care to be available for everyone who would benefit from it. So looking in the chat, I see a few things here. People saying pain and symptom management to improve quality of life. That's a great point and something that palliative care does definitely work to do. And we'll talk more about how we do that. I see someone saying they think of terminal illness when they think about palliative care. So let's hold that in mind. I think a lot of people think that Palliative care might be about end-of-life care or about a terminal illness, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that and maybe add some more important information around some of those specific thoughts. Uh, management, helping cope with health problems. So great. I think people are certainly in the right space, and I'm glad everyone's here too, so you can get a lot more information uh, about it. So let's Oh, I see someone with a hand raised. Is it uh, Francis? Did you want to make a comment? All right. Maybe not able to uh, unmute right now, but if you're able to put something in the chat, maybe we can do that, or and you might be able to help Francis uh, to unmute. But let's go ahead and talk about a big question that comes up is how is palliative care different from other medical specialties? I think one of the most important ways that we're different is sort of our overall philosophy and our perspective. We like to say that palliative care really sees the person beyond the disease. And I think as an example, we would think about uh, the individuals we're working with as a person living with cancer rather than a cancer patient, putting that person part first rather than the disease or the illness first. So a simple turn of phrase, but I think it reflects really well the perspective that we try to take when we're working with individuals. I think we're a little bit different than other uh, areas of medicine in that we provide a whole person or holistic approach. We know that when someone's living with a difficult illness, for a cancer, for example, or heart failure, that certainly there are issues with the body, physical symptoms that come up, Maybe that's pain, maybe it's shortness of breath, but we also know that that can affect kind of people's emotional or psychological well-being. Practical issues often come up, maybe that's financial concerns or concerns about caregiving. And then also spiritual, or sometimes we call those existential questions. Those might be questions like, why is this happening to me? Or how do I make meaning of what I'm going through? And in palliative care, we really try to work to address and acknowledge 
but all of those different components of life can be affected and interact with each other and that we need to help address all those components uh, to really improve the quality of life. I think another important, important point that's here on this slide is that we put the person and their family or loved ones, their chosen family, whatever it may be in the center of our care. So it's not just necessarily uh, helping the individual who is living with an illness, but also their team, their caregivers, their loved ones, friends and family. Again, just to reiterate the point that palliative care is a little bit different in that we don't specialize in a particular disease or a particular part of the body or a particular organ system, that we really try to focus on the whole person. And that's really where our expertise lies. So unlike a cardiologist or a heart doctor that focuses on the heart or a kidney doctor or a nephrologist who focuses on the kidney, we're looking at the whole picture. You know, to help us look at that whole picture, we work as a team, and that can be a little bit different than some of the other uh, areas of medicine. So on the team, we have doctors like myself, we work closely with nurses, we have social workers, and spiritual care are chaplains who are part of our team as well. The doctors and nurses will often help with prescribing medications, often targeting difficult symptoms like pain or nausea or shortness of breath. We often are also helping the individuals we're taking care of think through difficult medical decisions. Maybe someone's weighing, should I try uh, to get a new or more chemotherapy? Or is chemotherapy maybe not a good fit for what's going on with my health? Or maybe they're trying to think through, what would I want to do if I were to get more sick in the future? Or if things don't go as well as I'm hoping they'll go? We're here to sort of talk through some of those thoughts and planning as well. Myself and my colleagues, we spend a lot of time on the phone with other doctors. We do a lot of talking to make sure that someone's care team is on the same page and that we're working together to come up with uh, a single care plan. We know how complex medicine has gotten and how often um, there are a lot of different providers that are working on a single case. So we try to help with that care coordination piece as well. Our social workers are available to help provide emotional support, to talk with caregivers or to individuals about their caregivers, to help think through ways we can support them. We help out with getting things like medical equipment that might be needed, whether that's like a walker or a wheelchair or maybe a hospital bed at home and then available to address financial concerns. We're aware of how financially taxing living with an illness can be. Our chaplains are available too to provide spiritual uh, support, to offer prayers or blessings, and to wrestle with some of those bigger questions about why is this happening to me and how do I make sense of all this? So we've talked a bit about how some of the ways that palliative care is different from other areas of medicine. And next, I'd just like to go through what's kind of the most commonly accepted definition of palliative care to try to put some of these ideas together. And then we'll also break those down again and kind of go through some of the phrases that are used in this definition. Again, if there are questions coming up for you, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get to those uh, momentarily. So let's go through this uh, standardized definition of palliative care. And that's that palliative care is specialized health care for people living with a serious illness. We'll come back and talk more about what that might mean. And this type of care is focused on providing relief from the symptoms and the stress of the illness. The goal is to improve quality of life for both the patient and the family or friends, or chosen family, however you may define that. It's provided by a specially trained team, and palliative care specialists work together with the patient's other doctors to provide an essential and extra layer of support. And palliative care, and this last point I think is one that's important for everyone to pay a special attention to, because it's often new information for individuals. But palliative care is based on the needs of the patient, not on a prognosis or the time that someone might think someone has left to live. 
it's actually can be appropriate at any age and at any point in a serious or a difficult illness and can be delivered alongside curative treatment. We're gonna come back and revisit this point again um, because I do think it's so important uh, that people hear that piece. So let's, let's break down some of this definition a little bit further. In the very first line, we talked about palliative care being for individuals who are living with a serious illness. And I think that begs the question, well, what is a serious illness? I know if I get the sniffles, it feels serious to me, and I am not, I'm not a happy camper. I'm not a very good patient. But when we're talking about serious illness in this context, uh, we're often thinking about someone who might have an illness that could be life-limiting, that might mean that their time may be shorter because of the seriousness um, and the impairment that an illness may have. A lot of times, some of the common diagnoses that we see in our clinics and in the hospital are people who might be living with a cancer, who are living with uh, damage or injury or ongoing disease of a major organ, like heart failure, liver, kidney, or lung disease, or maybe a neurologic problem like dementia, ALS, or Parkinson's disease. These are all really common diagnoses we see. I also think that palliative care can be helpful for someone who maybe there's not one particular thing that's causing a problem, but for a multitude of reasons, maybe there's someone who have, is having to spend a lot of time in the hospital. Maybe they're back and forth from the hospital four, five, six times a year. That might be an indicator that palliative care could help think about how can we make their quality of life better. Also someone who might be becoming more and more dependent on other people. They're not able to do as much for themselves. That's another time where the illness is starting to impact probably multiple aspects of life, thinking back to that holistic or whole person perspective. Someone in the chat had mentioned um, helping out with pain and symptom management and relief from that symptoms and stress. That is really where our medical expertise shines. And these are some symptoms that I'm often talking with individuals about in my appointments. So pain is a big one that we talk about, difficulty breathing, nausea, constipation, something that sometimes is easy to forget, but we know no one feels comfortable when they're constipated. So that's always top of mind for us as well. Some of those emotional or psychological symptoms are also really important to us. So we think about anxiety, worry, depression, sadness, just that stress piece of everything. Other symptoms that uh, we are happy to talk about and think through and work together on can be fatigue, weight loss or low appetite. Sometimes people are living with nerve pain or you might've heard that called neuropathy. And as we mentioned, thinking about caregiving, thinking about sometimes the additional stressors that come from both needing care, which might be a new role for people, or providing care, again, can be a new role uh, for individuals. So we've talked about some of the symptoms and things that we can work on. Let's take a look at, well, how do we go about, what's our approach for helping to relieve these symptoms? And I think first is that we acknowledge that any symptom that's going on, often there's a lot of components behind why that symptom might be happening. I think pain is a really good example. For pain, we know that that's a physical experience. There are nerve endings that tell our brain, hey, this is an ouch, this hurts, this hurts. But pain also triggers parts of the brain that process emotional um, information. So we know that pain also is affected by our emotional state. So I know that when the individuals I work with are more stressed, more anxious, their pain is going to be way higher than it would be when they're feeling relaxed and calm. And we utilize all that knowledge and those different components to try to help target and bring pain down. So we certainly use medications. We use psychological interventions like breathing techniques, referring to counselors or therapists, um, integrative techniques. We often are talking with our the people that we work with about things like acupuncture, massage, um, meditation, and the spiritual side. A lot of people get strength from a higher power 
And utilizing that to help manage symptoms, to manage pain is a tool in our toolbox that we definitely reach for and use. We also mentioned that part of our job is to help with medical decisions and thinking about different treatments or care in the future. And so we sometimes are helping people with something we call advanced healthcare planning. This is a broad topic that can include discussions with your family members about your desires, what's important to you, um, what would be important to you if you were to get more sick or couldn't speak for yourself. Sometimes that involves completing advanced directives, which are also sometimes called living wills, or completing other forms. If you've heard of things like pulsed forms, um, so we are happy to go over that paperwork and review that and make sure that it really lines up with what's most important to you. And then certainly weighing different treatment options. Using that example of cancer, it's really common in my clinic that we're thinking about, given where things are with someone's illness, what's important to them, does getting more chemotherapy, is that going to help them achieve their goals? And if so, we're going to help support someone through that. And if not, we'll talk about that too and think about, well, how can we make life as good as it can be for as certainly as long as it can be, even if chemotherapy isn't a part of the care plan. So we're really there to support whatever is right and best for you and help be a sounding board to help figure that out when maybe it's not always clear. One of the lines in that definition was that palliative care is an essential and extra layer of support and I wanted to pause here just to help people understand, too, that if you are seeing a palliative care team, it does not mean that you're giving up any other components of your care. That's the extra layer part. So the individuals that I see in my clinic, they still have their primary care doctors. They have their specialists, whether that's an oncologist for cancer, a cardiologist for heart disease, a pulmonologist for lung disease all those members of their team are still part of their care team. And as I mentioned before, we do a lot of work to coordinate with other doctors and other members of the care team. So you don't give up anything uh, when you're seeing a palliative care team. We are extra support. Let's go back and revisit that really important last part of the definition of palliative care where we were saying that palliative care can be appropriate at any age, in any stage of an illness, and can be delivered alongside curative treatment. And I just wanted to list and tell you about the, the type of individuals that I'll see in my clinic. I see people in my clinic who might be newly diagnosed with an illness. They might be feeling pretty well, but they might be a little overwhelmed by the prospect of having a new difficult illness. And that's where we might work with them to think about that coping, stress, caregiving piece. I even will see sometimes people who might be cured of their underlying illness, but they still have maybe some lingering symptoms from the treatment that they went through to get their cure. I certainly see people who might be getting curative treatment but they're going through a really difficult time with their treatment. So maybe the treatment they're getting is causing pain or they're having weight loss or difficulty eating during that treatment. And we're helping to support them through that. But the plan for them is to get completely cured of their illness. And then we certainly see and work with individuals who maybe we can't cure their underlying problem. Maybe it's a progressive uh, illness that there is not a cure for. Uh, but we'll still be working with them to help make life as good as it can be. And then we work with individuals too, who maybe they're not getting treatment dedicated to the illness, but we're still working again to make their life and their quality of life as good as possible. So does palliative care work? That's a good question to be asking. And there have been several studies that look at the question of does palliative care improve survival? Does it help people to live longer? And the graph here on the left is from a major study that was in something called the New England Journal of Medicine, which is kind of the premier, the best academic medical journal there is. And they looked at individuals who, when they were presented to the clinic, they were diagnosed with 
uh, stage four or metastatic lung cancer. So they already had pretty advanced illness. And they either got palliative care right from the time of diagnosis with regular follow-up, or they were continuing to see their oncologist and they got palliative care kind of whenever the oncology doctor, the cancer doctor decided or thought that it would be helpful. And this graph is showing survival and where the graphs, um, those lines separate is showing that people who are in that early palliative care arm uh, or part of uh, that group, they actually ended up living a little bit longer. So they lived um, several months longer than the, the regular care group. So this was a big finding that uh, got a lot of people excited about palliative care, recognizing its benefits. And this finding has been replicated in several studies looking at a few different types of cancer. I think what's really important for today, though, where we're really talking about quality of life is that palliative care has been repeatedly studied and shown in multiple studies to help people have better quality of life, whether that's through improved symptom control, like pain management or improving shortness of breath, or reporting uh, improved spiritual well-being, fewer psychological symptoms, greater satisfaction with care. Palliative care has been associated with less days in the hospital and less hospitalizations and improved outcomes reported from caregivers. So all really good things that make a, a big difference in people's lives. So I've been talking for a little bit and I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and invite uh, some colleagues from uh, another part of the country just to talk a little bit more about palliative care, uh, just so you can hear a few different voices. This also will highlight a few patients who have received palliative care. Just give me just a second for this video to load. Here we go. Palliative care is person-centered care. Everything about it is bringing the person into the conversation. We talk to the patient. We understand where they're coming from. We understand the family dynamics. We understand the culture and the environment. And we try to figure out which of these treatments that we have available fits that. It's fantastic because I feel like we're a team, a baseball team or a soccer team. And we're all these different moving parts trying to care for our patients. It seems like they're more really, really interested in me. You know, it's like more of a family. When I see them, I'm more, I'm comfortable when they call me. She was the only doctor that came and held his hand. And I, that to me is this compassion that comes from being a palliative care a doctor. It was really because I wanted to improve people's lives. And that happens some days in other fields of medicine, but not, it's not your primary goal every day with every patient as it is in palliative care. The people are wonderful, really wonderful. And it's just a very warm, accepting, positive environment. And that's, I, for me, that was what I needed. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful just to have a few other perspectives from some other individuals about their experience with palliative care. Um, just to move to a few uh, frequently asked questions, um, a lot of people ask, well, when is the right time to ask for palliative care? And I hope from earlier, you've gotten a bit of a sense that if you're someone or a loved one of someone who's living with a serious illness, that individual is having difficult symptoms, difficult decisions, or difficulty coping, those are all times when a palliative care team might be able to help. I think that we can be particularly effective in helping when there are multiple domains of life that are affected. So just like that holistic or whole person model we showed at the very beginning, that if the body, the mind, the spirit, if more than one of those domains is being affected, um, that's where I think we can provide a lot of help. Some people wonder, well, how do I ask for palliative care or how do I get palliative care? And we really recommend the first step is to talk with your current care team about whether or not palliative care might be helpful for you. So a few phrases or words that might be helpful is to say something like, I wonder if palliative care might be a good extra layer of support for me or my loved one. 
would you be willing to refer me to palliative care? You can get the conversation started. Or maybe from today's talk, you've heard something that you think you could specifically use some help with. So maybe saying, I'd like to get some additional support for pain, and I'm wondering if a palliative care consult might be helpful. Or you can certainly use this talk as a great excuse that I went to a palliative care talk uh, or a talk by a palliative care doctor. Do you think seeing them might be helpful for me? Sometimes we get asked too, who pays for palliative care? And Palliative care is covered um, by insurance like any other medical specialty. So for example, if your cardiology or heart doctor is covered by your insurance, palliative care would likely be covered just the same way. So there might be a copay, for example, if there's a copay when you go see your heart doctor, it would be about the same. And in California, um, especially for individuals who are on our public health insurance plans, uh, there was a state Senate bill that was passed that really promoted access to palliative care uh, coverage by public health insurance. If you're wondering if there's a palliative care doctor uh, in your insurance plan, often you can go to the insurance portal and you can search things like palliative medicine or hospice and palliative medicine or palliative care. I tried this out on my own health insurance portal and using those phrases, I found the providers that would be the right fit for palliative care. If you are interested in getting connected to services, um, the best way to access palliative care is really probably through a referral from either a primary care provider or through a primary specialist, so another doctor that's seeing you, or sometimes if someone's admitted to the hospital or seen in the emergency room, they can also get a referral to our team. I'll just remind you all too that you might be learning some new information about palliative care and overall we are a somewhat new specialty in the field of medicine. And so I've come to see too that even my very well meaning colleagues may not always have as full of an understanding of palliative care as I do or maybe even as you do now that you've attended this uh, this session. So if you do meet any resistance when you're asking for palliative care. I do recommend consider just being insistent that you can say that you went to a talk, you have a good understanding of what palliative care is, that you'd like to at least meet with the team once to get more information, and hopefully that would be helpful. As we start to wrap up, I did want to come back to this topic of palliative care and hospice. We know that these two concepts are often thought of very similarly, and I'm hoping that I can help to describe how they are similar and how they're different. And this is a good image, I think, to have in your mind when you think about the terms palliative care and hospice. Palliative care is big and broad. And as we talked about, we see individuals that are all along um, different places in their illness course. So we see people with a new diagnosis who are going to be cured of their illness and beyond. Hospice care really does refer to care that's really focused for individuals who might be facing the end of their life or the final phase of their life. So it's more narrow than palliative care and who would be appropriate for hospice. However, the overall philosophy is still to prioritize quality of life, but in a little bit of a different way. So let's talk a little bit more about hospice. When I think about hospice, I do think of it in sort of these three different categories. One, it's a philosophy of care. Two, it's actually an insurance benefit. And three, it's a set of services. As a philosophy of care, Hospice focuses on supporting uh, individuals for whom comfort and quality of life is really the highest and number one priority. Typically, a hospice will think about every intervention, whether that's a lab, a medication, a procedure, a treatment, and they'll sort of ask the question, does this help this individual be more comfortable today? And if it does, hospice will want to provide that. And often that's medications that might be helping to alleviate a symptom like pain or shortness of breath. And it typically would say that things like additional procedures or lab testing, um, that those typically aren't helping someone to be more comfortable in the moment. And so they typically wouldn't recommend those. 
So again, the philosophy of hospice is really a good fit for individuals who want quality of life and comfort to be their number one priority. And that often means that individuals that are placed where they are prioritizing less interventions that might prolong their life. They're really focusing on having every day be as good as it can be and worried or concerned a little bit less with doing everything possible to make sure that there are more and more days. As a philosophy, hospice also aims to support individuals being in a place that's most comfortable to them. So hospice isn't necessarily a place that you go. In fact, an overwhelming majority of hospice care is provided in an individual's home. It can be provided in other settings like in a nursing home or an assisted care or assisted living facility. So you mentioned before, hospice is also an insurance benefit, and it's covered by nearly all insurance plans, including Medicare and Medicaid. While we're on the topic of insurance, someone is asking in the chat too if palliative care is covered by Medicare, and if so, how much? And certainly Medicare does typically uh, cover palliative care, and each insurance provider uh, might have slightly different amounts of coverage. So it's always good to check with your insurance provider for coverage for palliative care. But in general, Medicare plans have and do cover palliative care. And often it's about just which uh, providers that they're contracting with for where you could find a palliative care team that matches up with your insurance. Hospice is widely covered uh, by insurance plans and certainly by Medicare and Medicaid. As an insurance benefit, the insurance coverage for Medicare provides the eligibility guidelines. So when asking the question, who is eligible for hospice, the insurance guidelines offer that two doctors assess that an individual more likely than not has a prognosis of six months or less. So that's where this component of hospice being primarily for individuals who are facing the end of their life comes into play is that insurance eligibility guideline. Because hospice is focused on really that comfort in the moment and for the day, they typically don't cover, for example, if we're talking about cancer, things like cancer-directed treatments like chemotherapy or immunotherapy. So with hospice, unlike palliative care, that is a time when there are some trade-offs about the different therapies that may be available or not available. So in palliative care, kind of any treatment under the sun is still possible to happen while getting palliative care. Whereas on hospice, the focus is really different and typically not all therapies uh, would be covered by hospice. I do think it's always worth discussion about specific treatments with your care team or with an individual hospice agency because there are some areas that can be a little bit gray and worth discussion. So just to round out our discussion about hospice, it is a set of services and similar to palliative care, they work as a team. So they have doctors, nurses, social workers, chaplains. They also have volunteers and home health aides. As we mentioned before, it often can be provided in the home. So it provides home-based care. A huge benefit of hospice is that they have a 24-hour nurse line so that if there's an issue at home, you can call and get a live nurse on the phone to give you advice about how to help get someone comfortable if they're having distress at home. And they have the ability to send on-demand nurses to the home uh, if the telephone advice wasn't sufficient. They can sometimes help to transfer someone to a nursing home if that was needed. So if someone's care needs were greater than what could be provided at home, they could help arrange going to a nursing home. Although important to note that hospice wouldn't necessarily cover the room and board cost associated with the facility. They prescribe and provide all the medications that are needed for symptom relief and they provide medical equipment like a hospital bed, wheelchair, commode. It is important to note some of the limits of hospice that they don't provide 24 hour care. So often a nurse is coming to the home uh, maybe once a week or perhaps more frequently if someone was having a lot of symptoms and they can turn that dial up or down, but those are for maybe a visit a day at the most and wouldn't be there in the home for multiple hours per day. So again, 
feel free to put more questions in the chat, uh, just a few more resources to share, and then we'll transition over to talking more about other questions that have come up. Um, if you are a patient at Stanford and think that palliative care could be helpful for you, we have clinics throughout the Bay Area in Palo Alto, San Jose, Emeryville, and Pleasanton. Uh, we do a lot of video visits, but we do have in-person visits available as well. And the easiest way to get connected is to ask your provider for a referral. The Bay Area is also very blessed. We have a lot of great palliative care colleagues throughout the Bay Area. This is a partial list and just to give you a sense of uh, all the different um, programs in the area. No matter where you live, you can go to the website getpalliativecare.org and you can put in your zip code and find a palliative care program near you. We've got a few other resources here. And uh, Anne will be emailing out these slides to everyone who's registered for the event, and we'll be posting the recording and a copy of the slides on our website as well. But just a few more areas where you can get more information about palliative care from these three websites. And then again, that getpalliativecare.org is where you can uh, find a palliative care team near you. And as we wrap up, just I think the big take home message that if you or your loved one are facing difficult medical decisions or difficult symptoms, palliative care is really here to partner with you to improve your quality of life and navigate those difficult decisions. So I just want to wrap up our content area with another video here of a patient sharing her story of working with palliative care. Neuropathy is, it's a type of nerve damage. It affected my feet, my hands, and that's how I make my money. So I've been out of work for more than a year and a half. I met Debbie when she came into the hospital with an acute pain crisis. She was really going through a lot in terms of just living with this new diagnosis um, and then to be suffering from symptoms sort of related to the treatments so that she can live with the diagnosis. With me being in the pain, I just shut myself out and just stayed in my room. The most they saw of me was to come out and get something to eat and go to the bathroom. She was really crippled by this neuropathy. And you see she does hair and that was one of the things that came out when we were in the hospital you know, sort of what bothers you the most about this pain. They talk to one another and they come and they talk to me with each other. Not, you know, they're talking just in a conference among themselves, but they include me in that conference that they're having with one another in terms of uh, the medication I'm on, how I'm treating, how's the medication treating me, how I'm sleeping. Um, how is my quality of life? I mean, she, she's such a beautiful person and so lovely and social. And you can imagine for her not to be in that world, it really robs her not just of, you know, financial security, but her identity. And I think it's powerful to think that if you can give her some of that back by controlling her pain, um, you're really allowing the miracle of her treatment for her myeloma to fully, fully realize itself. I would not be back sitting in this chair right now if it wasn't for the, the program. I would be lost without them right now, lost. Uh, she's a perfect example of how palliative care can help. I, I feel I'm in the driver's seat because they're really concerned with how I'm feeling. 